Plants, like other biological organisms, are the products of heredity and environment. Trees growing in a natural environment develop a form and structure related not only to their genetic makeup, but also to the multiplicity of environmental factors to which they are exposed over a period of time. A tree that develops in a dense stand within a forest will have a narrow crown and a tall lean stem due to crowding and limited light within the stand. A tree that develops in an open area will have a broader, fuller crown with a stem of greater caliper and taper. Trees growing in a nursery also develop a form and structure related to the stresses and environmental factors, climate, moisture, soil, nutrients, and light imposed upon them by nature. Plants in our nursery can also be modified in their development by various cultural practices such as spacing, staking, pruning, chemical applications, planting, digging, and by a host of biological modifiers such as disease, insects, vertebrates, weeds, and human beings. It is important to keep in mind that the goal of modifying plant growth depends on the specifications of the client. The uniform trees with single straight trunks and full canopies specified for many development projects would not be desirable for the more naturalistic landscapes that are growing in popularity. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video we'll discuss shoot modification through staking and pruning, water modifiers, chemical modifiers, and modification by light. Spacing affects the growth and development of plants in the nursery. Plants produced either in the field or in containers to be sold as specimens must be spaced far enough apart so they can grow in an unrestricted manner. If they are spaced too closely or allowed to remain too long in high density plantings, they will become malformed and may be unstable for many markets. With sapling trees, whether grown in the field or in containers, there is a tendency to overlook the importance of spacing. At close spacing, the saplings tend to grow taller, but the lower foliage is shaded and tends to drop off. Staking and pruning are strong modifiers of plant form and structure. Because they are closely related and interact with wind, they will be discussed together. Pruning the stem or trunk of young trees induces a preferential distribution of the photosynthates toward the upper portions of the stems, making it top-heavy, whereas the action of wind induces a preferential distribution of the photosynthates towards increasing the diameter of the lower portions of the stem, making it thicker. Staking young trees has a tendency to promote growth of the upper portion of the stem to the detriment of the basal portion. Unstaked trees that were exposed to moderate multi-directional wind produce sturdy stems. One objective in producing shade trees in a nursery is to develop a straight, strong leader. For most species, this can be accomplished by allowing the saplings to sway in the wind. For some other species and for budded clones, it may be necessary to support the sapling temporarily by staking. This is especially true if the growing sites are exceptionally windy or the primary winds are one directional. If staking is done, it should be very flexible and confined to the lower portion of the stem allowing the upper portion to sway in the wind. The support should be removed as soon as the tree has developed sufficient caliper to support the crown. Printing practices vary with cultivar, market objective, and personal preference of the grower. A good nursery pruning program commences with the planting of the liners. The tips of spreading evergreens and some shrubs are frequently cut back with an elevated lawnmower to induce full branching and compact growth. Trees that normally grow with a central leader should have multiple leaders removed to leave the tallest, straightest one. In addition to developing good stem structure for trees, pruning young plants in the nursery is done to improve the crown structure. Then the crown will reduce the weight and wind resistance during the early life of the young trees, thus aiding in stem development. Branches that join the stem at narrow angles are weak and should be removed if they are not absolutely necessary for the overall form of the trees. Branches selected for the main scaffolds should form wide angles. 30 to 60 degrees to ensure that they will withstand stress when they are older. In more vigorous species, it may be necessary to head back branches that grow more rapidly than others to keep the crown in balance. If the tree has two or more buds per node, a desirable practice is to remove all but one of these buds. This encourages the maintenance of a single leader. Coniferous evergreens are pruned and sheared either to enhance their natural form or to correct malformations and growth. Most large conifers require little pruning. Double or multiple leaders may need to be removed periodically. Rapidly growing pines are best pruned during a flush of growth, the candle stage, to ensure the development of terminal buds. 
Evergreen shrubs, for example, junipers and yews, will often require two shearings during the growing season to develop into dense plants. Choosing the time to prune is often affected by other operations within the nursery. Because pruning is very labor intensive, it is frequently done when there are people available. There are other factors, however, that impact the time of pruning, such as stage growth, the market objective, and also climate. As a general rule, it is best to do major pruning before the stage of most active growth because wounds will heal most rapidly at this time. Maintenance or correctional pruning, however, can be done at any stage of growth without adverse effect. In the first year of potting or planting in the field, rapidly growing shrubs may need frequent pruning to establish a well-structured compact form. Likewise, the first two or to three years after planting young trees is the critical time for establishing the basic structure of the plant. A final shaping is often desirable a few weeks before sale to enhance appeal and value of the plants. Pruning branches should be done just outside of the collar that naturally forms at the junction of the branch and the trunk of the tree. Clean, sharp tools must be used when pruning in the nursery. It is a good practice to clean and sterilize pruning equipment at the end of each row and after each tree or shrub that is suspected of being infected with the disease. The application of tree paint to wounds is of minimal value and is rarely used in production nurseries. The growth of plants in the nursery is greatly influenced by the availability of water. Trees suffering from moisture stress produce significantly less growth than trees growing under optimum levels of soil moisture. Trickle irrigated trees growing in nursery rows exhibit greater trunk diameter increase than do non-irrigated trees. Sheep growth in a few species can be reliably modified by chemical means in a nursery setting. Some chemicals are effective in reducing growth of shoots while others are effective in accelerating shoot growth. Still other materials can be used as chemical pruning agents or for control of sprouting. Maleic hadroside, MH40, succinic acid, commonly known as aminazide, abscisic acid, ABA, and semidol, and other chemical growth regulators have been used to restrict the growth of woody plants. Gibberellic acid accelerates the growth of some species of woody plants. Selected fatty acids can be used as chemical pruning agents, whereas the ethyl ester of naphthalene acetic acid has been used to ex inhibit sprouting following pruning and suckering of some grafted and budded plants, for example, crab apples. However, most of the chemical modifiers should be used with caution. Only products that are registered for a specific use should be used and they should be applied only according to the product label on a limited number of plants as a trial. As a general rule, plants that have hairy leaves and distinct inner nodes respond better to growth regulators applied as foliar sprays than do plants that have waxy leaves or enclosed growing points. Also, plants in the early stages of vegetative growth respond better than those that are dormant, in flower, or in the late stage of growth. Foliar applications should be made when the temperature is between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is high, 50% or greater. The chemicals should remain on the foliage for at least one hour to ensure effective penetration. Some materials are emulsions and must be carefully mixed with water to produce a stable mixture. Emulsions should be applied as a fine mist uniformly over the entire plant. Excessive applications must be avoided since large accumulations of the emulsions can girdle stems of tender plants. The best response on woody species has been when the chemical was applied as a fine mist when the plants were in the early stages of a flush of growth and the new shoots were two to four inches in length. Sprouting at the base of grafts can be successfully inhibited in nursery stock by a single spray application of naphthalene acetic acid ethyl ester NAA ethyl ester when applied at the concentration of either 0.25 or 0.5% to the base of the trees just prior to bud swell in the spring. Light intensity and photo period can modify the juvenile shoot growth and development of seedlings of many woody species. Long photo periods produced by extending the natural day length is approximately 16 hours with supplementary low intensity light, 100 foot candles, or by breaking the night period with a brief period of light that will cause many species of the plants to remain vegetative. However, all other modifiers, temperature, moisture, and nutrition must be maintained at optimal levels. It is also possible to increase growth of some species by shading. Many herbaceous perennial plants also respond to a combination of photoperiod, day length, 
and to vernalization, cold temperature. In conclusion, hopefully you learned how nursery plants can be modified to create a better product through actions such as pruning and staking, watering properly, applying chemicals, and manipulating the light.